everyone, here we are, Robin and Victoria, and today it's just the two of us doing the Tipsy Realtor, but we're making a pretty cool cocktail called the B&B, and we're talking about how to have a business in your home and ideas on how to make it work, because this obviously became a huge, huge conversation during COVID, but a lot of people are still working from home, and as realtors, we see that kind of how the transition to the work-to-home lifestyle has become a priority when buying homes nowadays. So we, because this cocktail is a pretty easy cocktail, are going to be letting Victoria doing our pouring today. <laughs> I'm really excited. She's very excited to be pouring the cocktail today. Anna, unfortunately, isn't here, but we are always missing Anna when she's not. So it's one and a half ounce of brandy. Yes. So I am good. I'm, I'm pouring. <laughs> We're just doing both cocktails at once because with this kind of recipe, there's no shaking. There's no kind of fanciness or anything like that. So this is a pretty simple kind of sipping drink that you can just pour right into the glass. Now, ice is optional if you're not someone who likes to drink cold. And now she's sticking in a one and a half ounce of Benedictine, which is a liqueur. And Anna will definitely love this cocktail. I agree. This is definitely a sipping cocktail, which is why it's going to be so funny, because once we have this cocktail, you're going to see... How next month's prize pairs so well with this cocktail. So I did suggest to have it in a brandy snifter. So here is the end result of our cocktail. Nothing fancy, ice in a glass, big brandy snifter, little bit of Benedictine, little bit of brandy, and yeah, you can swirl it around if you're fancy. Ice is an option. And then let's cheers and let's see Victoria's face. It's really strong. The, it's really, really strong. This is definitely a sitting by the fire, out at a campground or in your backyard. This is that kind of cocktail. This is an after dinner cocktail. It is a beautiful, I love kind of the taste of the Benedictine in there with the burn of the brandy going down. It's really nice that way. It's got a sweet taste to it. it it's sweet. It and is it's sweet. the warm all over here. It is warm. <laughs> Definitely, this is warm. So if you're doing some winter camping or you want to get outside and celebrate the weather before it gets nice and warm, this would be the perfect drink for you. Yeah. So it's definitely something that warms you up in the wintertime. We're going to make one for Anna when she's going to come back. <laughs> That's right. So now we're going to talk about getting your home office ready or how to run an office from home. So for both of us, obviously, running a business from home is a second nature for us because I've been doing it now for coming on 20 something, 25 years, to almost 26. And you've been doing it now for how long? Working from home. Oh, since from home, like before real estate, I was working from home too. So maybe 10 years. I'm working 10 years. From home. Yeah. So it is something for a lot of people that they do nowadays. It is a fun activity, but I can tell you what some of the biggest challenges have been for me. I raised two children while working from home and three-year-olds don't tend to understand when mommy's closed the door to the office that I might be on a phone call and they still scream and cry and bang on the door and all that other fun stuff. Yeah, but even when you don't have a small children, it's re sometimes it's really hard to organize your space at home. Like really, really, for me, for me, organization for me is not my strong side, you know? And it's hard to get not distracted by shiny objects, like other things that need to be done around your house, because that is the biggest thing that is when you're sitting there and you're getting bored of working or you're, you know, feeling frustrated, thinking, oh, I could just throw in that load of laundry. I could just make that dinner. I could just meal prep. I could bake this. I could clean that. And that's the biggest thing. And I think that the biggest change for me in my business was when my husband said, all businesses have hours and so should you. And actually, I completely agree with that. If your work, make hours for your business. And if hours for your business are nine to five, those are your work hours. And you only do work activities in those work hours. But you also need to have a defined space that is your workspace because deciding the kitchen table or the dining room table where everyone else has to live or the living room or anything like that, deciding that that's your workspace, that's not going to work. So you've got to make sure that you've got a separated space in the house that is your defined workspace. And when Robin was talking about working hours and when I started working with Robin, the first thing uh, 
she taught me it was like you need to know that you can say no like when oh, you're yeah. with a when when, you, when you're with your kids and client is calling just don't pick it up like you need to say no yeah and then vice versa too is if you're at work and it's your work hours just because you're home doesn't mean that your kids get to distract you from work. It's no different than if you were at an office somewhere else. And we actually were just talking about that because I know for me, when we first started having children, I'd already started my career in real estate. And then I remember when Zenon was six months old, we tried for the first six months of watching the me watching the child while I was working from home. And at six months, I called my husband and I explained to him that our child was going to start going to day home because it wasn't going to work. I can't parent my children while still trying to perform my job and no one else unless you're a childcare worker expects you to do that yeah. and you know like i remember the time maybe it was like four months when i started working and i have a lot of clients maybe like seven and i call robin and say robin I, I i can't like it's too much because like i was new and i say i can't deal with all in once i'm just overstressed i don't have time for anything and i still can't find the time for each client and what we did, um, Robin gave me the list and she yeah. said, like, write like every minute what you're doing, yeah. like all day. And then we sit and we try to organize a day so I can have time both, both for family, for work, for all the clients, all in once. And also, too, is that's the other thing is create a work schedule. Like I know for me, yeah. I generally pick my days for paperwork and evenings and afternoons for showing clients and looking at houses for clients. So make sure you make a good work schedule, plan your tasks. I love task planning. It is one of my most favorite things. I love sitting down. I actually have a little book that I write like just a constant ongoing to do list in. And then I just cross it out as I go. And it's honestly, sometimes the only way that you can actually keep track of all the different things that you have to do. And then I know during my work day, I will generally go down and I will put a blue dot in front of all the work activities that are work activities that I have to get done that day so that I don't get distracted by doing personal activities. The whiteboard is working really good because it's like really visual. It's like right in front of you in your office and you know that this thing needs to be done and it's like catching your eyes right away. Well, and the other thing, too, is you're going to have to set rules for the people in your house. So if you have children in your house, even your spouse in your house, you're going to have to set rules for them that they have to know that if you have, if you're in your office, if you're in your workspace, that's not time to come in and chat and talk about the day or anything like that. It is your workspace and it is your work time. And just like you wouldn't show up at their work, vice versa. So I remember... Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Don't mind the dogs. I remember when my husband used to do shift work and he would have days off during the week and I obviously would be working and he'd be like, what's well, my day off? You want to go for lunch? You want to go do this? And I'm like, no, I'm working. So you have to set those boundaries for everyone in your house, your kids, your spouse, anyone else that lives with you, family members, you have to let them know that if you're working, you're working. Yeah. And because the perception is like when you're at home, everybody thinks that you're at home, that you're not working, but you need to make it really clear. Even you're working from home, you're still working. Yeah. And also too, is you have to let them know things that you can and cannot do just because you're working from home. So again, I remember times in the past and keep in mind, I love my husband. He's an amazing husband. So these are just experiences that we've had in the past, but you know, just because you're at home all day. It doesn't mean that you're going to have dinner ready. It doesn't mean that you're going to have the house clean. It doesn't mean <laughs> that all these things are going to be done just because you happen to be at home because you're still working and your work is not house cleaning or anything else like that. You also ha should keep a uh, kind of a family planner too, which is always kind of a happy kind of easy thing to do is that family planner because that family planner will help you when it comes to planning kind of family events and when they are and keeping them outside of your personal time, outside of your work time and keeping them inside your personal time. And I think we need to mention when you have a mortgage in the, on the house and you have a home office and you're working from home, you need to write off. You can the, if it's a business. If it's a business. But yes. definitely talk to an accountant. So always talk to an accountant about what write offs that you can do when you are working from home and talk to an accountant as well. If there's percentages of your utilities. mortgage, your utilities, your rent, your property taxes that can be written off. And usually that's based on square footage or percentage of the house that you're using as a workspace. But that's definitely where you want to get that accountant from. 
Also is if you're talking to an accountant, if you are a self-employed person, so not a contract person or anything like that, you may want to talk about, should I be incorporated? Because just because you have your own business doesn't mean you should be incorporated, doesn't mean you should be a limited partnership. Make sure you get some really good professional advice on that. And they'll tell you when it's a good time to get incorporated and a good time to be limited. And I'll be honest, I absolutely love my accountant. He's fantastic. I have to say it is the best money I spend every year making sure that he keeps me together when it comes to my finances. So, okay. now. We have a prize draw today. A prize draw? You're jumping. We're not even done yet. Oh, you're done. You're not done? No. Okay. Noise canceling <laughs> headphones. If you have a hard time when you're at home and you have a hard time not being distracted, noise canceling headphones are never a bad idea. Putting on some nice, easy listening music on headphones so that, you know, you don't get distracted by other things that are going on inside the house, other noises, stuff like that. That's always a nice way to do. And always, actually, I'm a big believer in this. A lot of times people will wake up and you'll spend your whole entire day in your pajamas working from home. Get dressed like you would if you're going to the office. You know, put yourself together. It does help really deal with your day and it makes you feel more professional than sitting there in your pajamas without your hair done, without your makeup done and all that kind of stuff. Do that because it does help you get in that business mindset. Even if you're putting on a suit to stick around the house, it makes a difference. So uh, prioritize your work. Again, big fan of that. Prioritizing is probably the hardest thing for a lot of people because you want to be very reactive and make everyone around you feel good. But you want to make sure that everything you're doing is the proper priority. Not everything is on fire all the time. So make sure when you're looking at what you're doing, is this something that needs to be done now? Is this something that can wait? Now, sometimes people will put an urgency on it that you don't feel or understand and maybe ask more questions to understand why there is that level of urgency. But you know what? If you're not agreeing with their level of urgency or you don't see the urgency or you have other things that are more urgent, it's okay to prioritize those things over someone else's fire. And I think we, I need to mention, it's again, Robin always said, when I'm, I'm kind of a messy person and I have everything in once in my head. And when I start talking to Robin and I'm just jumping from one to another to another, and she's like, stop, like one thing at a time. Let's concentrate on one thing yeah. at a time. We're going to deal with one, then we're going to go to another. And that's exactly what you need to do. So if yeah. you have your priority as well and you have a time, to do the certain task is going to be the way more efficient when you're going to start doing everything at once and just lose everything. I always like that focus on one thing at a time is and follow it through to finish, to completion. So I know lots of times it's so easy to get distracted, but if you start doing one task, follow through to completion. Do not get distracted by another thing because then you'll just have half done projects everywhere. Complete your task to completion, even if Every fiber in your being feels bad about it. Keep going. Get it completed. You will feel better. I know for me, again, I have a big list of things. I find great satisfaction crossing items yeah. off my list. And the other thing I found too is so I put goals up on a board. And I actually do find that continually writing them down, those goals, whether you do daily, weekly, or monthly goals, even annual goals or lifetime goals, putting them straight in front of you so you see them all the time and rewriting them all the time or every one week or one month when you're refilling your board, it really does ingrain it in your head that that's your goals. And sometimes I joke around that I've made goals in my life and I don't even know how I accomplished them, but I did because I kept writing down every week and every month that that was my goal, that that was what I was going to do. And it just ended up happening. I found paths. I saw opportunities. But actually this happen. is a method. If you're keeping something like in front of you, like the, everything turned that you just accomplished obviously you need to work on that but you accomplished this goal and you just you just don't even realize how it's happened yeah. and you already look at your board and just oh my god this is done and this is done absolutely and then also too is if you're running a business from your house make sure that you're licensed and that you have proper zoning to do it because the worst thing is putting in all the effort to put that business into your house to find out that your neighbor calls it in 
and you get shut down because you don't have the zoning or you don't have the license or you don't fulfill the requirements. So double check that before you start putting businesses in your house. Make sure that you you make sure that you can actually have the business where you're having it and that you're meeting all those city requirements or provincial requirements to do so. Especially if you're working with food. Especially if you're working with food or children. Yeah. Food and children. Food and children. <laughs> or food for children. Or food for children. Oh my God, that was a whole nother story. That was in the news. Okay. So now we are going to have prize time. And Anna's not here, but I did get to download her app. So for our, because of our big duck hunt this weekend, I downloaded it. So I'm very excited. Take a look at our wheel. It's full and full of names. You can win six of hurricane glasses. For the patio. Yeah. Plastic so no one breaks them. And here we go, spin. Tracy Lynn, you're the winner. Congratulations. Now I'm going to do this, which on my phone does nothing. Oh, but on Anna's phone, it does something. <laughs> <laughs> Mine, it does nothing. But it's Tracy Lynn, you're the winner. We will get in touch with you, and we will get those. But next month, next month, we are giving away these glasses. Now, I'll be honest. My husband does this like enjoying his cigar. That's actually not what it's for. Your finger, you're cute. No? No, it's a cigar glass. Okay. <laughs> so this is where you put your cigar, and then you would put your cocktail inside it. Or you could put for your the finger. With a finger, it's really comfortable, actually. <laughs> but if you're a cigar smoker, you know someone who's a cigar smoker, it's a pretty cool little glass, because they can put their cigar on the edge of their glass, and then they can have their whiskey, their rye, their bourbon, anything they want to enjoy while they're having their cigar because summer is coming and we're going to start enjoying these outdoors. We are going to have little glimpses of snow over the next couple of days, next couple of weeks, but it is slowly getting warmer and our days are getting brighter. So please start enjoying the outside. Now, oh, sorry, hang on. All prizes are offered by and on behalf of Remax Realty Professionals <laughs> for Rika. And uh, <laughs> next week, we're going to make a cocktail called New Love. And we're going to talk about what to look for on when you're buying your next home. That's right. But most importantly, and as always, if you are looking at buying or selling a home or know anyone who is looking at buying or selling a home, please give us a call at the number on the screen. Take a look at our website. Myself, Victoria, or Anna would love to help you out. Friends, family, coworkers, people you like, people you don't like. We take <laughs> referrals for anyone. I hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you next week. Bye.